So in this video, we're going to look at the South Celestial Pole. And just as a quick refresher, both the North and the South Celestial Poles are directly in line with the axis of the Earth's rotation. The North Celestial Pole is directly above the Earth's North Pole. The South Celestial Pole is directly above the Earth's South Pole and the angle above the horizon will match your latitude. Now, because these poles are in line with the Earth's axis of rotation, when we look up into the night sky, all the stars will appear to rotate around the North Celestial Pole if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. But if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, as I am here in Australia, the stars will appear to rotate around the South Celestial Pole. So this is Sky Safari Pro 6, one of my astronomy programs, set for my location in Broome and currently looking towards the South Celestial Pole. Now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm sure you are familiar with the North Star, Polaris, but we can't see that from Australia because it is below the horizon. And it is below the horizon by a number of degrees equal to your latitude. So from Broome, Australia, at 18 degrees south latitude, the North Celestial Pole, Polaris, is 18 degrees below the horizon. Let me play a time-lapse video taken from Perth. Now Perth is actually 32 degrees south latitude, and in this video I'm looking directly north, and you can see very clearly that the point of rotation is well below the horizon. So this was taken with the P900, and as you can see, it can produce some impressive star trails when focused correctly. It is also apparent that the stars are rotating about a point that is well below the horizon. This is looking north. If I was facing south in Perth, the point of rotation would be 32 degrees above the horizon. So I'll play another time lapse taken with the P900, this time from Broome, looking south towards the South Celestial Pole and you will see that the stars are rotating in a clockwise direction. So this one was using the standard star trails mode in the P900. It is looking out across water and this bright light you can see was a buoy. I'll show you what the area looks like in daylight. So I'm just heading back down to the location where I had the telescope set up last night so that you can see it in daylight. was parked about here and this is where I had the telescope set up and there you can see the buoy that was illuminated last night due south is in about that direction so I'm sure we have all seen star trails videos like this of the south celestial pole you can see the center point is quite dark. What I like to do is show you observations that you generally won't see on other channels. So last night I took the telescope with the very powerful ZWO astrophotography camera and I zoomed right in on the South Celestial Pole to see what was actually there. You can see that the P900 lacks the ability to show any of the stars right near the center at this zoom level. 
but with the astronomy camera and the telescope, we can certainly see a lot more. So you're about to see what happens when we point a telescope at the exact centre of rotation and turn the exposure right up. From the P900, it just looks dark. But with a telescope, my God, it's full of stars. So what I'd like to do at this point is help you appreciate just how zoomed in the telescope was. Please take note of these three stars and these two small stars here. If we go back to Sky Safari for the moment, the star that is generally associated with the South Celestial Pole is Sigma Octantis, also known as Polaris Australis. Now there you can see it does appear very close to the South Celestial Pole. If we advance the time, it is rotating very close to that centre point. In actual fact, it is more than one degree away from it. If we zoom in, you can see that the position of Polaris Australis, Sigma Octantis, is not directly at the South Celestial Pole at all. If we zoom in further, we can now see those three stars that are in the image and also the two smaller stars that are indicated. They are much closer to the South Celestial Pole than Sigma Octantis, which is way up here. So remember that this image is zoomed in so far that we cannot even see Polaris Australis. We're looking right at the South Celestial Pole at a position of the sky that appears black to the naked eye and even the P900 was unable to resolve any of these stars. So I'll place a link to this image in the description below. You can download it yourself and then try a plate solve using this website. I just did that and what it does is determine exactly what part of the sky we are looking at. You can see here, this is the image and then if we place the grid over the top, that is going to show us precisely where the South Celestial Pole was right there. So that confirms that I had the telescope nicely pointed towards the South Celestial Pole. It also gives you other data about the image itself. The size 1.74 by 1.17 degrees. So Polaris Australis was too far away from this point of rotation at this zoom level to even be visible in the time lapse. So I'll play two clips now. I had the telescope set up for several hours and the first clip is simply the individual frames compiled into a time lapse. It was quite clear for several hours and then unfortunately the clouds came over. But we also had a few breaks in the cloud so I kept the time lapse going. And the second clip I used the frames to produce a star trail time lapse. So you'll notice the image shakes around a little. That was just because of the wind affecting the telescope and it's more apparent in the Star Trails time lapse. I'll show you a brief clip that I sent to Where's Wally when I was setting up the telescope. Just showing the polar alignment but you can hear the wind and you can see the effect it is having on the position of the telescope. How's that for a polar alignment? The variations are just because of the wind. But it's pretty good.
So it is quite apparent that the stars are rotating around a central point. Remember, everything you see here is invisible to the naked eye. And also this entire field of view represents only a very tiny portion of this image taken with the P900. The P900 effectively shows nothing at the center there, but with the telescope, we can see there is plenty going on. This is actually a really good location to set up the telescope. I have it in the shadow of the aircraft, which means I have plenty of light to work with, but it's not really interfering with the images. There's the telescope and the P900, both pointed directly at the South Celestial Pole. The telescope is zoomed right in and the P900 is for a wider field of view. There's an aircraft landing. The telescope is taking one frame every eight seconds and the P900 one frame every 30 seconds. It took me a while to set both up accurately, but now there is plenty of battery life, so I'll leave them running for the next six hours or so. Time to check out the snacks on board and then perhaps lay down and have a rest. And the best part is I can leave everything set up for tomorrow night. I don't have to disassemble the telescope. Just bring it on board. It can sit here safely all day.